Welcome, everybody. I hope y'all had a beautiful Thanksgiving. And just like you knew we would, Puff Daddy got slapped with yet another lawsuit. Right on Thanksgiving Day, people, Diddy got 99 problems and then some. It's like everybody's accusing Diddy of being an evil doer. And his latest victim to come forward, alleged victim to come forward, is Joy Dickerson Neal. And she also names names, just like Cassie did. Uh, Jodeci, Devonte Swing, yeah, we know his name. And according to Miss Neal, once again, Puffy recorded his crimes and he allowed Devonte Swing and other people in the entertainment industry to look at this video. So Devonte Swing can corroborate Miss Neal's story because he was the one that confirmed to her that the video existed. This is not, this is not good, Diddy. Mm -mm. And you got folks like Naomi Camel and Janet Jackson snatching Diddy's pictures off their timelines, off their social media profiles. Keisha scrubbing them off the recordings. You know, you know, people that have these kind of, that harbor these kind of thoughts, you should get help. You know that you're thinking in a way that's not in line with society. You know you cannot just be forcing your will on people that it's not cool. Get help. It's not worth the grief that you bring to your life, to your bank account, to your family, to other people's families. You know you ain't right. Sit down with somebody. Even Diddy was talking about that he's in talks with T.D. Jakes a little late in the game. Do it. Sit down with somebody before you act on these kind of nutty things. This is all alleged, but it's just sad. It's really sad. It, it is heartbreaking for families and people to go through this. And I don't celebrate this kind of stuff. It's, it's really not cool to hear. <laughs> it is sad. I just got Jay-Z up there because of the 99 problems thing. But you know, even after this Adult Survivors Act, even though it's coming to an end in just hours, hours, that's not gonna change the fact that Diddy's problems are going to continue with all this slipping stuff into the drinks. I mean, you breaking a lot of laws when you slip substances into somebody's drinks. It's not just the assault. It's everything that goes with it. This is a whole lot of wrongdoing and we're having the same accusations come up in these recent filings. And this latest accuser is demanding a jury trial. And I think this stuff is gonna go to a jury trial. Uh, and we, it probably would be for the best for this to be heard by a jury and even set the public at ease because concerned citizens, tax paying citizens, we need to know what's going on. And the fact that they gave this allowance from November 24th last year to November 24th this year, I think it's unfortunate that it falls on Black Friday, but we don't want uh, this element. We don't want this element just running around freely through society, just wreaking havoc on anyone that they see that they can run over and use as a victim. We don't want this. So whoever can come forward and shed some light on the wrongdoers in our society, I think, I think it's all good. This Adult Survivors Act is supposed to give a look back window for the people that would not have, for the people that wouldn't have their case heard otherwise because the statute of limitations ran out. And the fact that money is involved, I think that's also fair. I mean, money is a deterrent. It's, it's supposed to serve as a deterrent that you're gonna get your, your finances attacked when you do things wrong. We have the same thing in play with traffic violations. That's supposed to be a deterrent to speeding, running red lights, running over people with your car, uh, drinking under the influence, even though people still do it. You know, it's, it's supposed to be a deterrent and this should be a deterrent. You should be made a spectacle of in the public eye, yeah. So, and plus these dudes don't wanna write a check anyway. So, you know what, just, I mean, who wants a chunk of their wealth, a chunk of their income taken? Nobody does. So, you know, these dudes are not trying to just cut these checks freely. So in recent days, all the way up to the 11th hour now, Diddy along with former bad boy president, Harvard Pierre, um, Axel Rose, Interscope Records co-founder, uh, Jimmy Iovine or Iovine, <sighs> Cuba Gooden Jr. again is caught up in some stuff because, you know, people that have this behavior, they kind of like, this is the way they get down, you know, and why, why? 
why don't you just get the girls the consent to this kind of stuff? You know, it's people that get down like this, no judgment. Maybe it's a phase that certain people go through, but I don't know. It seems like some people like making a sport out of other human beings, like just uh, want to get somebody in that position, like a uh, deer caught in headlights. That's some, you. if you think like that, you need to get some help. If, if you out there, with those kind of thoughts, or you know you have a mate, a loved one, family member that that has some behavior that's just not cool, talk to, get them some help because this stuff is devastating to everybody. And you know, if you have an appetite for certain things, just find you a friend that wants to get down the way you want to get down. It is devastating. And now we have Jamie Foxx being named in a suit. This man has barely recovered from his health scare. And now we have this mess. I mean, these are people, we enjoy them. You know, these, the only reason why they're worth talking about on this level and why this news trends so high is because these people are like, I mean, I know Jamie, I, I have broken bread with this man. I'm so proud of everything that he's done. And I to hear these allegations, it's like, why can't people with the success in this money behave themselves? Why? And these are not just frivolous claims. You can't take it like a frivolous claim because the woman that's accusing Jamie, she also filed a report in 2020, allegedly. So when that's true, this is just sad, it's sad. So Jamie is supposed to have been under the influence at a club and a woman that had the likeness of Gabrielle. She, it, it was like a spot for celebrity upscale situation. And she wanted a picture with Jamie. That's when this was supposed to have taken place with Jamie in 2015. And the woman says that she wanted to take a picture with Jamie. She was with her friend and he just basically violated every part of her body. Every part, actually, it's kind of hard to see how that's possible but her friend is supposedly have, her friend supposedly saw some of what went down and that's what made Jamie stop. It's, it's wild. I'm, I'm just gonna read a few lines from this article about the way they say it went down and the status. And of course, Jamie's attorneys, as well as Puff Daddy's for this recent allegation, they're saying that it's just a money grab. Jamie Foxx has denied sexual assault allegations after the star was sued over an alleged 2015 incident. The 55 year old Oscar winner was accused of placing both hands on a woman's waist before proceeding to move them under her top. The plaintiff identified only as Jane Doe claimed he started rubbing her breast and he pulled her by the arm to the back area of the rooftop at catch New York City and roof. She further claimed that the intoxicated star told her she looked like Gary Gabrielle Union and touched her in intimate areas. So she said that he, he penetrated both areas that you enter under the panties. So this is really wild. A spokesperson for Fox denied the allegations in a statement saying the alleged incident never happened in 2020. This individual filed a nearly identical lawsuit in Brooklyn. The case was dismissed shortly thereafter and the claims are no more viable today than they were then. Okay, so uh, Jamie Foxx's attorneys are saying they're confident that these charges will also be dismissed and he will not be paying. I don't think, when you're not guilty, <laughs> when you're not guilty, if you're not guilty, why would you ever offer up money for a settlement? It makes no sense. Unless you have a complicated relationship with that person like Diddy had with Cassie. On to Diddy's recent allegations. It would, didn't we know, it, I told you it wouldn't be, I told you we wouldn't make it to the end of the year and there was no way we would make it to the spring before someone else came out speaking out against Diddy violating them because the suspicion and the whispers have been there for years. And Cassie opened the floodgates. And even with this Adult Survivors Act coming to a close, People can still write books. People can still go on podcasts. You know, people can still get uh, deals with Netflix. They probably do a whole big documentary. Ooh, this is a this is a mess. So all the all the major outlets are covering these covering these uh, covering this story about Diddy. Of course, this is like I mean, he's a mogul. This is a billionaire. 
The article reads, Sean Diddy Combs is in legal trouble once again, facing a second lawsuit that accuses the music mogul of drugging and raping a then college student in 1991. Now this adult survivors act, it doesn't matter when it happened. They allowed this one year window. So 1991, you can't say nothing about that. The woman, Joy Dickerson Neal, filed her complaint Thursday in Manhattan Supreme Court a day before the New York State Adult Survivors Act expired and alleges she was drugged, sexual assaulted, sexually assaulted and abused and was the victim of revenge porn, according to court documents obtained by USA Today. Combs videotaped the January 1991 assault and distributed the tape to others in the music industry, according to the suit. This caused severe harm to Ms. Dickerson Neal's reputation, career prospects, and emotional well-being. Dickerson Neal's attorney, Jonathan Goldhurst, said in a news release sent to USA Today Thursday. So they do mention that she demands a jury trial and they came to know each other because they have mutual friends and that she was even warned about hanging out with him. Another part of the article says that after dinner, which was held at a location where she had worked as a server, the two continued to spend the night together. Dickerson Neal recalls Combs taking, to her, taking her to a music studio and then to his home where the assault allegedly took place. A male friend also identified as Devontae Swing, a member of the R&B group Jodeci, revealed that he had viewed the sex tape with other men. Dickerson Neal asked Swing who had seen the video and he replied, everyone, everyone. So she claims that she had emotional, um, you know, she suffered depression, which could you imagine? Could you imagine someone violating you like that? It's alleged, but when what she says is true, I know a lot of people don't have a problem believing that Diddy is capable of this and that he probably did do this. It's terrible. It's terrible for his family. I mean, this man has children. They probably sat down for Thanksgiving like, you know what, let's maybe let's try to make the peace. Maybe they skipped Thanksgiving, but I think they may have sat down and said, let's just enjoy Thanksgiving. And then here you got to drop the fork, not drop the mic, but drop the fork because here comes some more mess. Ooh, it, it's going to be it's going to be some kind of year because this is going to start all kind of discussions. It's going to people are going to come forward. They're going to share their stories. It's I don't know why people just can't find a normal way to get down this is just it's it's uncalled for it, there should be no question when you get ready to get down if you're willing to do it or not there gonna have to be some checks and balances out here because this is just too wild this has just happened like it's just in a tempo it's too much anyway i will keep up with this story and other stories i wish y'all a beautiful holiday season until i see y'all the next time y'all keep living your life like it's golden peace